Okay, so we're gonna be making this one. You see the nav bar? So pretend this is a nav bar. It sticks and then it disappears. And when you scroll up, it appears. Right? You scroll down, it disappears. So that's the behavior. So it's sticky. First of all, it's sticky. And second thing is... Um... Okay. So let's get the party start. Okay, so the first thing is create a nav bar. Whichever box you want. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Right? So uh, the first thing to make it sticky is very simple. Position. Um, it's called sticky. And this is very important. Top zero. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay? So this sticks. Okay? Now, next thing we want to do is transition. We're gonna target transform. We do it one second. And then ease in out, basically. That's what we're gonna do. You can do it ease, honestly. It makes no difference. Okay, so transition is not going to work right now because we're not transitioning anything. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, we need to create a state to capture scroll of the Y axis, right? So we're going to create const, we do scroll, data, set scroll, data, equals use state and then we're gonna do let's set y to zero and then we need to capture last y to zero so the reason why we need last y is because when you're scrolling up we're gonna be comparing right if previous value of y is bigger is bigger right then current value of y that means you're scrolling up does that make sense so y will capture your scrolling so imagine this you're scrolling up and down and we're capturing last value of y right so when you're scrolling up when you're scrolling up right the value of last y will be bigger than your current value of scroll so that will tell you that it's scrolling up and that's how we're going to activate the um, nav, right? So, okay. So what do I need to do now? So we need to create use effect. That's going to fire one time, right? Const handle scroll equals like this. And then we need to do set scroll data. Um, previous state. And then we can do return. Okay, so in here we need to put window scroll y. So if you want to console log window scroll Y, you'll be able to see that it will capture the scroll. So it starts from zero and then it goes. Um, actually, I'm going to console log it for you. So you'll be able to see it. And then last Y is equal to previous state dot Y. So we are basically capturing this value in here. I know it's a bit confusing, but bear with me. Bear with me. So now, this is a little bit strange behavior. In use effect, when you're using event listeners, even though you are firing it one time, it goes into the browser and it stays there. So as long as you start scrolling, it will take effect. It will activate. So we're going to do window dot add event listener. We're going to listen for scroll and then handle scroll. Okay. So I'll show you that it's working. Let's do... Whoops. 
So as soon as scroll data changes, we want to console log uh, scroll data, this stuff here. So you will be able to see the scrolling actually happening, okay? So you see we're scrolling and then it's happening. Now the reason why you need to fire it one time in use effect, right, is because if you look at elements and then event listeners, you see there is scroll event listener being added. Now the current problem is that it's added every time component re-renders. So you need to set up cleanup function. Otherwise your application, the more you use it, the slower it's going to become, right? So to set up a cleanup function, basically use effect return. Uh, so this is equivalent to component did unmount. Right, so as soon as unmounting happens, we want to get rid of this uh, window, remove event listener, scroll, and then handle scroll. So as soon as component unmounts, we want to get rid of this event listener. Otherwise, it's going to stick in here. And then imagine you re-render it like 1 million times or whatever, 10,000 times. You're going to have... Uh, a lot of event listeners in here. So that's what we're trying to avoid. Okay, so now we're able to see. All right. Okay, so now we need to add a class, right? So we need to add a class. Let's call it hide nav. And let's just transform translate y and we do minus 100%. So we just want it to go up and disappear. You can do it with height or but then you have to change transition to height. Right? But like um, translate y is probably the easiest way to do it. So now look um, if we apply uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let me just do this for you. One second. Okay. <clears throat> so now if we apply the class hide nav and um, wait. Hmm. Yeah, I made a mistake in CSS. One second. <clears throat> hmm. It immediately fires with the... Yeah, and you see it, it triggers on start now. Yeah, we need to deactivate this thing one sec. Yeah, so you see, that's what we want to do. But we want to do it only under certain conditions. Alright, so the conditions are going to be... Mm, so we need a second event listener that's going to listen to scroll data change. Okay, so scroll data changes. And then we're going to do this. If... Oh, wait. We need to create a new state. One sec. Const show nav set show nav use state equals true. <clears throat> okay, so first condition is going to be if uh, scroll data dot y is bigger than so this is going to be scrolling from the top at what point do you want it to disappear from the top right so let's say um, let's put it at I don't know um, 
500 pixels. Okay. 500 pixels. We want. Scroll down. Okay. We want set show nav to true. Else. Set show nav to false. So if scroll is bigger than 500, we want the class to activate, right? So the way to do it is we do now we need to put conditions in here. So it's like this: if show show nav bar navbar is true, we want to show navbar. Else, we want to have navbar class and height nav class together. Whoops. So we want to start with false then, I think, right? Whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. Hmm, let me just think. Hold on a sec, let me just think. Hmm. So now it immediately, immediately applies, right? Oh wait, I think I screwed up there. Show navbar to Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it should be hide navbar. Yeah, I'm, I'm, tro I'm trolling, I'm trolling, I'm trolling. So this should be hide nav. Not show, but hide nav. This is, then, then logic makes sense. Otherwise you have to mess around with logic. So hold on a sec. Honestly, we can just do it reverse. It doesn't matter. We can just do it reverse. Hide nav. So now it's going to work, you see, so once we scroll over 500, it should disappear. There you go. Right. So now you see it appears. Um, as soon as you hit um, five, less than 500, now it appears, right? So now we want to do it, as soon as you start scrolling up, this happens as well. So we need to add a second condition, which is... Um, you can do it in here, or you can do it like separate, like this, if... So we need if scroll data last y is bigger than scroll data dot y then we want to do exactly the same thing. Mm. So now it's, it's, it's doing in reverse. Hold on a sec. Yeah, so you see. Oh, yeah, yeah, my apologies. I, I, I messed up a bit here. Okay. So now you see, now it's working. So as soon as you scroll up, or as soon as you scroll down, it disappears. You scroll up, it appears. Scroll down, disappears. And then it sticks as well. Okay, I don't like this behavior, so maybe we'll put it for... Uh, maybe 700. 
and put this to 700 and it will be better let's see Well, you get the idea, right? That's how it works, basically. So scroll down, scroll up, and that's about it. Take care. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. Um, that's where I got it from, actually. I found this uh, online, so you see, he has the same concept in here. But he done it like he had he created a custom hook. And then he done some exports, and then I noticed he has a lot of code in here that you don't really need. So, um, I'll link this in the description below as well. Alright, take care, bye-bye.